There's this common assumption that sales skills are something that you're born with. It's or you have it or you don't. But believe it or not, every person who's willing to learn how to sell can do it. All you need is to know some good sales techniques and a lot of practice. There are many things to learn about sales, since it involves emotions, thinking, understanding of how things work and what drives people and making the right decisions at the right time. Well, some products just sell themselves, but a shrewd salesman will be able to sell ice to Eskimos. In this video, I will reveal the top sales techniques that the best salesmen use, from entrepreneurs to big companies. Number 1. The Jones Effect Who doesn't want to keep up with the Joneses? The Jones Effect refers to people's need to catch up with the latest trend and not to feel like they're falling behind. In sales, if you put aside rare items, a product usually seems more valuable when many people use it. Why would you want an iPhone if there are many other good smartphones out there? Because everyone has it. Because the Joneses have an iPhone. Because it's more about the brand than the actual product. Also, if your favorite celebrity uses something, you're more likely to feel the need to have that too, so you could be more like your role model or feel cool. This is why many brands hire celebrities to promote their products, because people will relate more to someone they know from television, rather than to a random person. This is also why word to mouth is the best marketing method, because people would listen to someone they know and take seriously their recommendations. We would like to think that we want to be special, and it might be true, but we still have that need in our nature to fit in and be like everyone else, at least in certain aspects. Number 2. Attachment it's clear that there is a direct connection between emotions and purchase habits. A good salesman would try to listen to the customer, understand their needs and their weaknesses, not in order to exploit them, but to know how to approach them and what he could say to convince them better. He would address their feelings and if he does it right, he got a deal. It is also a good strategy to know what your audience wants and provide a product that will give them value. As for marketing, when creating a commercial, companies try to make us feel something. They try to associate their product with things in a way that will make the viewer generate the wanted feeling. A commercial to a car that presents beautiful women aims to make a connection between the brand and the social status. A commercial to a soft drink that presents happy and relaxed people aims to give an impression that drinking their drink makes people feel good. Number 3. Full power. In order to sell, the salesman has to have a lot of self-confidence and trust the product he sells in 100%. You can see that in the movie The Wolf of Wall Street, which is not a good example for morality, but the point is that the brokers there are so confident when they sell stocks on the phone, and they sound like they really believe that what they sell is valuable. It makes the customer think, he sounds so confident, there must be something in what he's saying. The confidence is expressed through body language, tonation, and sales pitch. Number 4. Overcoming Objections Salesmen need to have an answer for anything and be prepared to deal with objections. They will turn any objection to an opportunity. When trying to sell something to someone, the potential buyer immediately thinks of all the reasons why he shouldn't buy this product and why he doesn't need it, want it or will ever use it. He doesn't want to waste his time listening to something he's not interested in and doesn't want to spend his money on this product, especially if he didn't plan to buy it in the first place. I recently watched a nice commercial to a furniture company. The average person might think, why would I need a cake cover? So the commercial says, Everyone has this Uncle Jack that nobody knows how they're related, but he's still invited to every family meeting. He's always touching the cake with his fingers and licks the frosting. This cake cover is for you, Uncle Jack. They actually created a whole scene that people can relate to and imagine themselves in a similar situation, needing that cake cover. Number 5. Upsells in many cases, the big money comes from related products and additional items. An example you probably see frequently is in the supermarket. You're standing in line, waiting for your turn to pay, a little bored, and you have these bubble gums in front of you, so why won't you take one? Or maybe you ran out of batteries? Or toothpaste? These are small products that you don't always put in mind to buy, but when they're right in front of you, you're like, why not? It costs pennies. So apparently this pen is worth a lot and leads to jumps in revenues. Online stores like Amazon and eBay also use this technique by offering you products that are related to your purchases. I once spoke to a young man who helped his dad with his safe boxes company. One time, he went to deliver a safe box to a customer, made a small talk and asked for a cup of coffee. The buyer agreed and invited him to sit. As they drank coffee, they had a conversation about the purchase and the guy came up with a great idea. Sir, I understand that you want to keep your valuable item safe. How about you'll buy another small safe box to put somewhere visible, so in case the thief breaks into the house, it will think that that's all there is and won't look for the real one. 
The buyer liked the idea so much that he bought two more safe boxes. Number 6. Positive reinforcements. Adults react to positive reinforcements just like children or animals, but it's usually more complicated. I mean, a dog would obey to you if you offer them a treat in return, and a child would behave if you promise to take them to the playground. With adults it's a little bit complicated, but it works. Salesmen encourage the potential buyers to buy what they're selling, and give them compliments whenever they're about to make a purchase. The customer needs to feel that they made the right decision, and the salesman tries to give them this feeling. Number 7. You want it. Imagine that someone wants to be a good friend of you, so they beg you to meet them, call you on the phone and text you endlessly. That would be a turn-off, right? Same thing with sales. A salesman can't seem desperate, or else no one would want to buy from him. Instead of trying to get rid of the product and look stressed to close the deal, salesmen try to lead the person into wanting to buy. The ideal situation is one in which the customer feels that they earned something out of it, that they got a great deal. They need to feel that the control is in their hands, although the salesman is the one who leads the whole sale, and that they decided to buy because this is what they want, not because someone pressured them to do so. This way, both sides get value and close the sale with good vibes. In summary, these are the seven sales techniques we learned. 1. The Jones effect. Everyone wants to fit in. 2. Attachment. People are driven by emotions. 3. Full power. Self-confidence boosts the chances to close the deal and do it faster. 4. Overcoming objections. Turning an objection into an opportunity. 5. Upsells. The goldmine of related products. 6. Positive reinforcements. Encouraging someone to buy. 7. You want it. The seller wants to sell, the buyer wants to buy. A win-win situation. There's nothing wrong with trying to sell something to someone, although it makes many people feel uncomfortable to think they would bother someone. However, if you stay honest and stick to ethical values, that should be fine. The Wolf of Wall Street, which I've mentioned before, is a great example to salesmen who lost their values and became sales monsters. So yes, there is also this kind of salesman out there, but now you know their secrets. Thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed and learned something. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video.